Good to go. Okay. Well, good evening, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome you to the select board meeting of Tuesday, April 10th. And the first uh, item of business would be approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Okay. I have actually two changes. The Vermont gas, uh, which is item number number eight the easement is not ready and so that's going to push back to our next or uh, subsequent select board meeting and uh, we're going to make sure we'll slip it in the program if we need to uh, if it's before eight o'clock when we get to the middle road ventures because uh, charlie is planning to be here um, at eight o'clock and not before so are there any other changes? Uh, we do have a executive session as well. I'll point that out. We're working on a contract. Okay. If there's no other changes, all in favor with the amendments that I just suggested, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Next item of business is approval of the minutes of our March 27th regular select board meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any amendments? I just have a minor clarification. <coughs> In our board uh, committee assignment discussion on line 422, this regards the Economic Health Committee, you know, the discussion we had. And what we decided at the last select board meeting is that we're still waiting until after our strategic planning uh, meeting to decide what we see as the focus for that committee and its appointees. But I just wanted to clarify that it should read on line 42 that um, it has been suggested, well, it says there was discussion around the Economic Health Committee that had been suggested as a result of the Economic Health Task Force, but so far there has been no luck getting people willing to serve on it. We actually didn't in the beginning, but we have had some response. So I just wanted it to read but there has been, there was, or there was no luck getting people willing to serve on it last year. But we now have some candidates. Well, we do have candidates now. Okay. And, and that's good. In fact, we have three potential, four potential <laughs> strong candidates actually. And we just are waiting to decide on this future. So I, I just think that that would clarify that. And in 424, since we're, just tightening up that paragraph, it should read volunteers stepped forward to serve on it instead of step forward. So I think that would just clarify what we really were discussing. Okay. So I would just, I would just delete so far and on line 422 and correct step to stepped on 424. Okay. Any other changes? Stepping actually, stepping forward, stepping. Nothing? Okay. With uh, Laura's minor amendment, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I abstain. Yep. We have, yep, we have at least we have one abstention. <coughs> by the way, Victor, it's great having you back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, citizen comments. Opportunity for anyone who's here for something that's not in the agenda, the warned agenda. Please come, come forward. My name is Debbie Tract, and I live in Middlebury. Um, I just felt a need to express my concern over the impact of the bridge project on um, a particular business I know all business businesses in town are important but I just wanted to um, just express my concern over Carol's in particular um, Carol's came to town around the same time that I did and I have spent years I haven't spent years there although you might be able to count up um, the hours I've spent there into um, many days um, and I know a lot of people in town feel the same way. We, um, a lot of meetings have happened there. Friendships have 
um, begun and continued their contacts um, between colleagues um, and new contacts have happened there. And it just, it's a community hub and it's a gem. And my heart breaks a little bit every time I hear someone say that it um, may not make it through this project. So I know that there's a business plan and there's a marketing plan um, in place and I read through it and it's wonderful, you know, it's wonderful um, that a lot of thought has gone into this. Um, I just wanted to say that I feel like it's a really important part of this town and if there's any anything extra we can do to just keep it alive. I know so many people have had meetings there and it's just important to a lot of people. I think the town would be really, um, would suffer without it. So that's. Debbie, thank say. you very much. Uh, we certainly concur and we, we are working hard to, to make sure that we do everything we can uh, to continue the vigor of not just Carroll's but the entire downtown and uh, we're really we have our eye on 2020 to come up with something I mean I think that that is our critical mass point where we really uh, 10 weeks of shut down traffic uh, circulation through the downtown I, I think we have a plan in the short term in the near term we have some marketing um, we have uh, the reinitiation of parking enforcement. Uh, we have a number of activities that are going on that I think will drive us to solving some of the issues that, that occurred last summer so that the next couple summers hopefully will not be the issue. Um, but 2020 is critical and we're, we're working hard. Um, we don't have the solution yet, but uh, all ideas are accepted. So I appreciate your concern. I think the best thing we can do for our downtown businesses now is to uh, be patrons of them and, and you know ensure that that they aren't suffering in the near term with when the real issue is in the far is in, in the out years uh, because there's really no excuse now not to not to be patrons for our our downtown businesses. So thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, um, Ann, we've got a couple of liquor light, or just <coughs> one? Just the one final one, which is uh, Mary <coughs> Frazier, Down Home Deli Market, second class, uh, just looking for renewal. And at this point, I can report that most of the inspections are in, so I am able to um, send out licenses that have been approved by the state for most of them. This one still needs to be approved pending the inspection. I don't have that one yet. Questions of Ann? Mm -hmm. Pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to approve a second class liquor license renewal application for down home deli and market in East Middlebury pending the successful completion of public safety inspections. Second. Moved and seconded. And all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank, thank you, you Ann. Chris. Good evening. Good evening. We'll push that a little further away because I have a big, loud voice and I don't want to squelch everything. Um, I'm here tonight for a, a couple of reasons. One, just to give you a brief update on some of the things going on in the Forest Service in the town of Middlebury, of which there's not too much going on right now as far as uh, project activity. But the main reason I'm here, I think you have it in your board packet, is to request town approval for the Forest Service to acquire from the Conservation Fund a parcel of land located along the Dragon Brook Road um, in Middlebury. It's a 25-acre parcel. Um, that is currently owned by the Conservation Fund, and it's currently in current use. The Conservation Fund is applying to the, the Land and Water Conservation Fund with the federal government to acquire funding to be able to transfer the lands to the Green Mountain National Forest. I actually have an additional map that I would like to pass around to you that wasn't in your board packet, which kind of highlights the, the, uh, the 
trail infrastructure, the recreational infrastructure that's around um, that parcel as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Is it 25 or 26? It's, tw it's, on, it's on the tax roll as 25 acres, although the, I did notice the map says 26. Yep. So I would go by the what is on the tax roll as 25 acres. And I did a very coarse tax analysis. Um, we have um, Deb Brighton, who often runs our tax analyses for us. She was uh, unavailable to do it this time, and she futures it out a couple of years. Um, this is just a very coarse analysis looking at the 2016 bill and um, based on what the town of Middlebury currently receives in the 25% fund or secure rural schools money depends on the whether that's been reauthorized and it has been <coughs> for two years now um, and the payment in lieu of taxes um, the tax loss from the sale to if it transfers to the Green Mountain National Forest versus the gain that the town of Middlebury would get in the payment in lieu of taxes and that 25% fund would net you a whopping $1.51. <laughs> so it's kind of a wash as far as taxes go. Yeah. Hey, it all adds up. Yeah. It all adds up. <laughs> That's, yeah, that 151 is could be the difference between a project flying and it not flying, right? Right. <laughs> And then, then this in the packet, it said a small positive net impact. That was a tongue in cheek, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and it is part of a bigger um, land conservation puzzle <clears throat> that the conservation fund is trying to put together with some parcels in Ripton um, as well, some larger parcels in Ripton. And Ripton has approved um, the acquisition. As a matter of fact, I thought I had been before this board um, a couple of years ago and had already received approval until I dug back into my files and your notes and realized that it didn't come up last time I was here so well may it all be used well so I'll move um, uh, that we approve the transfer of the 25 acre Dragon Brook parcel from the conservation fund to become part of the Green Mountain National Forest second and second is there any questions is there anyone here that wants to speak on this you're in none all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Great. Is there thank anything else you wanted to review with us while you're here? Just thank you for that. Um, uh, I and the Conservation Fund appreciate your, um, your willingness to support the, the Green Mountain National Forest with the acquisition. The just, it's really uh, three other small things. One is um, just one thing that occurred this year was um, related to the Partridge Road, Forest Road 234, that the Forest Service worked with some landowners and I believe with the town, the landowners worked with the town to install the gate that's at the, currently at the end of the Partridge Road, which is, I guess, now determined to be a private road. Um, and that is now protecting both the private lands in there and the, the federal land beyond that gate, which we are seeing a lot of trash dumping out there and um, illegal or unauthorized ATV use and other activities. So we appreciate the town's willingness to um, support that gate being put in place. Um, the Middlebury office site is now essentially vacant. We no longer have operations out of that, that facility there. And there was a contingent from the town who came and toured it before we closed it in October. And at this point in time, we are still looking to convey it, but it has not um, been funded on our end. It has to receive some funding from the, the Washington Office of the Forest Service to be able to move forward. Um, and we anticipate it's the number one priority for the forest this year, and we anticipate that by the, by the middle of the summer, we should, be, we should have secured some funding to be able to begin to move that process forward. It can move forward in either a, um, a direct sale to a government entity or it could move forward in a, in a private sale via an auction. Um, so once that, that log jam breaks on our funding end, we'll certainly reach out to the town and let you know about that process and what the process for um, a direct sale would be because the town did express some interest, I imagine had some interest in it um, because it came out for a tour. And Kathleen, I do have some pictures of the floor plans, which I know were requested, but I don't remember the individual who requested them. Sure, I, we toured with Judy Harris. Okay. And she requested them, but if you forward them to me, can I get them I to you and have, them along? Okay, very good. Thank you. And then the last item is just that um, 
The Forest Service is undergoing some change efforts right now in, in a number of different areas, but one area that probably pertains to the town would be how we conduct environmental analyses. You know, we have some base law regulation and policy that guides how we make decisions and how we do our environmental analysis. And over the years, it has grown. We've added layer and layer of complexity on top of it to protect us from being um, either litigated or contested on certain issues, maybe not even on the Green Mountain National Force. It might have occurred somewhere out west. Um, and we're looking at those additional regulations that we've been piled on top of that have slowed our processes down um, and trying to peel back the ones that don't really apply anymore, that don't gain us anything in effective analysis to protect the ecological system on the forest. So, um, so what that would be <coughs> for the town is, you know, if you ever entered into an agreement with us or a project with us that, you know, our analysis would be more streamlined um, than it has in the past. And there's I'll also forward along to you, Kathleen, some facts and question and answers that we have on this environmental analysis and decision-making process that we're going through. It's going on nationwide. I don't know that it would have any particular impact on us at this particular time, but if we ever, like I said, if you ever had a project that you approach us on, like you wanted to improve something on the forest, we have a, an analysis process that can be burdensome at times if you're trying to move quickly, and that's what we're trying to peel back. And that's really all I have, unless you have questions for me. Do you have a presence in Middlebury still? We, so? we currently have a presence, although it's a very minor presence, at the Addison County Chamber of Commerce. We've been working with them to try to establish some sort of formal agreement with them. And it's been a little bit of a struggle because none of our agreement templates fit um, exactly what our relationship is. And right now, we work out of Middlebury by appointment. If, if someone calls and says, I'd like to buy a pass, I'd like to buy a permit, we'll make arrangements and come over and meet that person at the Addison County Chamber and we'll issue that permit. Um, so we're still working, trying to come to an agreement with the chamber. We also have some sister agencies in town, the Farm Service Agency, NRCS, um, that our new Secretary of Agriculture has a one USDA initiative. He's trying to get the various agencies in USDA to work more closely together. We kind of are somewhat disparate at times in our missions and how we operate. The Forest Service is often, um, because we're not agriculture in the traditional sense related, we don't fit well sometimes with NRCS and the Farm Service Agency as far as our mission goes. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are looking at working more closely together with them, and we may have a presence out of their offices On as Exchange well. Street? On Exchange Street, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, just to relate to you that the Infrastructure Committee heard a recommendation from our Public Works staff that the um, buildings and facilities on Route 7 South wouldn't be a good fit. Okay. Um, but I think that... Uh, if there is a price reduction or something, it be, might be good to uh, revisit that. Yeah, I'll certainly, I'll just, as a matter of course, I'll just let the town know that when we reach that point, yeah. um, and that, that the public, um, the direct sale would be for the appraised value of whatever the mm -hmm. property is. It's not, a, it's not a bid process, it's the appraised value. If it went on the private market, um, it would be, it would go to public auction. Okay. Yeah, Chris, so uh, actually, Laura, Part of part of it, and um, I was going to ask how it's working out for you, but you've already answered with the local site. But uh, yeah, I'll agree. That's, that's important to have a ranger presence here. So don't need an answer for it now. But there's something that we as a town can do okay. to help out. Um, you know, be sure to let us through Kathleen. Know what it is. Absolutely. Because yeah, we feel it's important to have a presence in in <coughs> Middlebury as well. Um, you know, it's the biggest population center on the north half of the forest on the districts that I manage. Um, I was a little surprised when we went to the chamber to see how little traffic came through the chamber for the Forest Service business, even during the leaf peeping season and that season approaching when we have Christmas tree permit <coughs> sales and things like that. Um, I'm not quite sure why it was less than it had been in past years because there was plenty of public information out there about you could go to the chamber and we we had staff there right through the end of the year um, but we, we do feel it's important in one form or another at some location to have a presence of the Forest Service in Middlebury and I think an obvious presence yep. maybe that was part of the problem with the chamber is that I mean I've been there but again 
Yeah. I read the stuff, but I, it wasn't a real obvious presence. But whatever, again, whatever we can do, because it is important. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for mission. Thank you, Chris. All right, thank you all very much. Have a nice evening. You too. You too. <clears throat> Will that decision be recorded in the minutes of the meeting that, that you gave town approval for the acquisition of that yes. property will be? When do those minutes typically get posted? It was uh, last summer, so I'll forward that to you shortly after we visited with you, Chris. No, 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 the decision for regarding tonight. the land oh, acquisition tonight. tonight. Okay. Yeah, they get posted usually by Friday. Yeah. By Friday? Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the next item of business is uh, the uh, nomination of appointments for the boards, committees, commissions, and official positions. And that was a separate, uh, it was a really nice rundown in the board packet. Uh, if you've got it open, it's the detailed draft. Mm -hmm. No, oh, there it is. It's up uh, on the screen. <coughs> so Nancy Malcolm has, when we look at the Planning Commission, Nancy Malcolm has let uh, us know that she is not seeking reappointment. Uh, she's really busy with the neighbors together and other activities and uh, felt this was a good time to allow someone else to move on to the Planning Commission. Um, these are three-year terms and Chris Robbins is up for reappointment and uh, Lucy Schumer has submitted her name. Um, in our tradition has been to nominate all of those interested and then come back at our next meeting and if there's more than one for one position that we would uh, determine at that time. Um, but we have had discussion about qualifications before we've nominated so I don't want to truncate any discussion that's appropriate. So um, is Lucy here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. hi Lucy. Hi, hi, hi. Would you like to uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself? So I did submit a, um, a letter. Um, my name is Lucy Schumer. I don't have much more to say than what was in the letter, but I've been a resident of Middlebury since 1984. <coughs> I've um, worked here um, in the education field in several positions and uh, raised my family here, and it's my home. Uh, I've served um, on, back when there were two school boards, I served on the uh, Mary Hogan School Board for 15 years and 12 years on the high school, middle school board, including um, my uh, short term as chair. And um, so I understand the importance of thinking about all the people who live in Middlebury, including people whose voices are not there with respect to the school board because they were too young or just couldn't come. Um, I feel the same approach is important for the Planning Commission too, that um, some voices are louder than others, but you have to remember everybody. So it, I've enjoyed my time um, working in, as a volunteer in town government. I'd like to continue that. Um, and um, I feel that the Planning Commission would be a learning experience for me to learn more about the town in a different way from the educational areas. And um, I have no specific agenda in uh, being on the Planning Commission simply to try to make sure that this town is and remains a wonderful place to live, work, and raise a family for many years into the future. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for stepping up. Yeah, thank you, Lucy. Very, you know, thanks for putting Appreciate your name up there. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. And I will point out that uh, the applicants uh, have submitted a uh, letter of, and Kathleen and Chris have consolidated it, if you notice, to one page. So if you hadn't. So how uh, are, are we are we waiting just to go through all of them and then nominate yeah, them all as Yeah, we can do it all as one yep. as one slate. Okay. I'd, I'd like to kind of we'll, we'll go through planning commission, development review board, et cetera, and then we'll mm -hmm. do a um, a nomination for all, all of the slate. Okay. I think. 
Could I just make a general comment then? Absolutely. Um, so I just want to recognize Nancy for her long service on the Planning Commission, and and I appreciate, you know, that um, people either need a rest or they're looking to rotate service, and I think that that's a really healthy and good thing, and that it's also very good for us to have a balance of seniority on a board and fresh voices on a board, and I think we're fortunate with the Planning Commission to see that with Lucy's addition now, and I know that Chris is wanting to continue on the board, and she's very interested in in um, the zoning regulations, and she has the history of having worked on the town plan, so, so I, and I see the other members of the Planning Commission kind of in that capacity too, so I'm looking forward to um, the work of the Planning Commission and a lot of our other committees and boards, and I'm looking for that same balance as we're considering uh, appointments, so I just wanted to say that. Yeah, and I think at some point, uh, I imagine the Planning Commission will recognize Nancy for her long service too, um, but appropriately stated, thank you. Uh, development Review Board, uh, we've got uh, David Hamilton and uh, Kevin Newton, uh, who serves as chair, that are both, the terms are up and seeking reappointment. Uh, Scott Foster has uh, given his notice that he is uh, not going to seek reappointment, and Gary Baker has been the alternate been serving as an alternate on the board and and would like to step uh, forward into scott's um, position that is becoming vacant there were no new applicants for the development review board so that does leave us short an alternate right it, we could fill an alternate yes so is there a sense of um, like the, the weight of a candidate that we would like to see on there or it will just Have they always had an alternate on that uh, on the DRB? I think that's a fairly recent development maybe within the last uh, five years the I, board had some good quality candidates and and yeah. didn't want to deny anybody the opportunity I, to I serve. remember that's what I was thinking uh, we had what we had was we had more people apply than we had positions for okay. and uh, Gary and and and, 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 and Taylor. was it Gary and Ann? Yeah, mm -hmm. and and Gary uh, said that he'd be happy to serve as an alternate. Um, and so, I mean, it, it certainly looks like the current slate will be solid in their attendance. But I do remember that the importance of an alternate was because there was always somebody that might not be able to make it, and that was really helpful. Um, so I don't know if that continues to be helpful. It, especially if it's a smaller committee, but if it's a larger committee, I think so it seems uh, okay. we're okay. 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 Uh, and then if we go to the design advisory committee, uh, we have uh, Chris Zioli and Lillian Snow, uh, both up for uh, reappointment and both interested in reappointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, Addison County Region, Regional Planning Commission, uh, Ted Davis and Carl Noyes, both interested in reappointment. And uh, Kathleen has been serving as an alternate, and I believe that's uh, by virtue of uh, your position as the town manager that you're on that. We uh, No, that was a decision of the board I had been a full representative and then the board slated me as an alternate um, to have someone to fill that position and David Hamilton is not seeking reappointment so you we could put you back into a full-time position and you're interested willing to do that or do we have a uh, j just note that Ashley uh, Lux had also expressed interest in being a full delegate uh, to the um, Addison County Regional Planning Commission as well, or an alternate. Uh, as well as Larry. Yeah. 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 And they're here. Okay. And Ross. Mm -hmm. So Ross, Larry, and Ashley are, <coughs> are alternates currently? or They are not. Uh, just Ross and me. And 
Okay, and these are just one-year positions that we're talking about. Right. Okay. All right. So then we should uh, so see. I can't. See, is that a three? I, my numbers on the available positions are cut off on my version. Is mm -hmm. that a three? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a three. So we have more okay. than. We have well more than three because you have mm -hmm. two for reappointment, and then it looks like. Well, that's good. Three for. Um, three for the one other position. So why don't we give you an opportunity to speak? Uh, I have them in an order here. I'll just go by the order. Ross, would you like to speak first? Uh, so I've really appreciated the opportunity to serve the community uh, as an alternate delegate to the Regional Planning Commission. I Can think- Speak uh, a little louder, please. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. I believe I've been uh, the alternate for five years or so now, um, so I'd welcome the opportunity to be a delegate. Um, I should let you know that uh, the Regional Planning Commission allows each community to uh, appoint an alternate for each delegate they have. So although you've only had two alternates in the past, you have the opportunity here, if you want, to appoint three alternates. Okay. I can always count on you, Ross, to know the, the real specifics about it. I like that. I Thank try you. to find, I, I like to oh. look into things, and, and I, I like to know why things are done. Mm -hmm. And I respect that about you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Ross? Well, again, um, Ross has been following the, the regional plan and been involved, and so there is some benefit to having that continuity, I think you know, on the board. And mm -hmm. I also see that um, the Addison County Regional Planning TAC delegate, Betty, um, is not committed yet. So for those that are here tonight and considering a position on the Planning Commission, I just want to mention that too, because that could be a very interesting appointment that one of you may want to consider. And that stands for Transportation Advisory Committee. So maybe keep that in mind. Um, I would just add that I have been serving on the Regional Planning Commission's Energy Committee, and uh, I've found that very helpful in my work for the town's Energy Committee. Okay, thank you, Ross. Larry. Hi, good, evening. good evening, everyone. Good evening, Larry. Good evening. My name's Larry Bailey, brand new to Middlebury about a month ago. Um, and I put my name in for consideration uh, strictly because the town that I spent most of the last 20 years in, which is Medford, New Jersey, went through a very large transformation um, for what they thought would be better for the community and better for the longevity of the town. And I didn't necessarily appreciate the opportunities that they didn't give the community in those decisions. So I felt it would be an important opportunity um, with this uh, chance take part in the conversations, um, which is why I put my name in for both the Addison County as well as for the Energy Committee, um, just to become more involved. Uh, happened across the, uh, the town uh, back in November and uh, bought, a, bought the uh, house up on, uh, Bushy's house, Bushy's old house up on uh, Washington Street Extension. So my wife and I are, are um, looking forward to, uh, to being engaged in the community in any capacity that you'll have us. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? It's so nice to see life back in that house. I live out beyond you, and I come by the house, and I watch you move in trailer load by trailer load. It's been a process and, for sure. Well, welcome to town. Thank you. We're, that's that, uh, is a beautiful spot. And mm -hmm. hope you enjoy it. Thank you. I hope so, too. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley. Hi, uh, my name is Ashley Laux. I uh, have lived in Middlebury full time since June uh, 2011, although I was a Middlebury College student. I graduated in 2006 prior to that. Um, I love living here. I work in, uh, at Middlebury College um, with Tiffany Sargent in the Com Center for Community Engagement. And I find um, such joy and value in encouraging Middlebury College students to participate actively as volunteers at many local nonprofits and in the local schools. 
Um, I feel like I have so many thoughts and ideas um, and ways I want to contribute to our town. And as I uh, worked my way through almost, not the entire, like 470 page um, town plan, uh, regional plan, um, I, I feel like there's so many opportunities for actualizing that plan. And I think it's a great time to join when it's um, in the middle of, a, of the five year um, duration of the current version of the plan because I think it's actually a time when the Commission can um, think about strengthening and improving our community infrastructure along the goals of the plan rather than just focusing on working to devise the next plan so even though it's in the middle of that time I think it's a great time to join the Commission um, I currently actually rent a house in Middlebury and I feel like um, as a renter and as a community member with a three-year-old, a one-year-old, and a stepson, um, I feel like voices of young families are very valuable to have in all of our um, uh, commissions, boards, and represented here on the select board. And so I'd hope to bring that voice uh, to the commission as well. Okay. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is great to have such okay. qualified people. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to have people uh, willing to step forward and, mm -hmm. and serve. So it's, uh, we have some committees we have to go try to pull people out, but it's, these are obviously not having that challenge. Uh, the Sports Commission, we have three positions, and... Uh, Robert Wells is not seeking reappointment, so we still have an opening then on the Sports Commission. Um, Kathleen, is that to run the uh, the Sports Commission? Is that to okay. do with the... Right, the hockey, the, the Memorial hockey, Sports uh, Center. Yeah. So you have friends of Middlebury Hockey that are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations and the sports commission that's the policy board. Right. So that could they're, be. They're doing a major fundraiser to, uh, I wonder if we just need to reach out to, uh, to them to see who would like to serve on that commission because uh, there's so many people involved in that fundraising activity. I can't believe one of them, they probably just don't know we need somebody <coughs> on that. Mm -hmm. uh, MCTV is uh, Farhad, and he's, his term still continues. Mm -hmm. We had just appointed him. Uh, we've got uh, the tax collector, Kathleen. I can just see a lot you of competition <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can look mean when you want to, huh? Um, Fence viewers, we have Dean Realm, uh, Donald Grohl, and Jeremy Rathbun mm -hmm. uh, for three positions. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. What is the responsibility of a fence viewer? I think that's uh, traditional, and uh, Kathleen, you probably have... So it is to um, work with landowners in disputes about fences and mending fences. It's a Robert Frost type of thing. <laughs> good fences make good neighbors, right? And uh, so I it. I've given out that when when people have asked me about their property line, I said, "Well, I think there's fence viewers for that," but yep. I didn't know for sure that that was mm -hmm. their job. So. Indeed. <laughs> okay, I was correct. Then. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we have uh, first constable uh, Chief Hanley. Uh, second Constable Gary Barclay, Town Agent Walter Calhoun, uh, Town Grand Juror Carl Noyes, Town Service Officer Kathleen, Tree Warden Chris Leoli, Zoning Administrator Administrative Officer Jen Murray, Deputy Zoning Admin Officer David Wetmore, um, and uh, they uh, are all continuing to serve uh, as appropriately so. Uh, downtown Improvement District then, we have a number in their st that are still in their current term and Gary Baker and Amy Ryan both seeking reappointment for two existing positions. And then we have the Town Energy Committee 
and we have a number that uh, are can still have uh, years left in their current appointments and uh, for up to nine positions we have two uh, Van Barth and Hannah Herbert who uh, would like to continue to serve and two uh, that would like to join Larry Bailey and John Snyder White <coughs> and so uh, is Larry here yes he just spoke to us <coughs> that's the other one yeah okay <coughs> After I've seen you a couple times, it takes ten times maybe. To <laughs> okay, I like that. Apologize. And uh, John Snyder White is John here? Not tonight, but okay. he has attended. Before. Yeah. So um, then, pleasure board. I think we would typically uh, look for a motion to. So, Brian, before we have that motion, I know that there are two women that joined us tonight <coughs> that the board may want to meet that expressed interest in the Economic Health Committee. So I don't know if it's appropriate to give them a chance to introduce themselves or um, I know yeah, we're not would, talking about it <coughs> right now, but I we're, we're not uh, we're not doing that committee right now. But I'd love to have this good opportunity because that's a committee that we're going to be hopefully standing up uh, very shortly. Uh, I Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Stacy Rainey. Could you come up to the microphone so we can hear you? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, hi, I'm uh, Stacy Rainey. I have lived in Weybridge since 2012. I moved up here um, to take a position at Middlebury Interactive Languages and did that for the past five or six years. And then in the fall, Mary and I started Community Barn Ventures right down here on Main Street. And we have um, committed ourselves to not only helping companies in the community, but also really making a point to invest in the community and doing what we can so that other folks like us can move here and find housing and positions that make it tenable to live in this great place and we're doing everything that we can to do that we're working with a number of pro bono clients including women safe to make sure that um, uh, we are um, just supporting organizations that we believe have a strong role in the community and I think we would like very much to serve on this committee obviously I know you have some work to do to figure out exactly what their mission is going to be um, I had spent some time early in my career working in politics in Massachusetts um, as a much younger person and valued that experience and would love to kind of dive in and get back involved here again if we're able to great thank you thank you <coughs> Hi folks, my name is Mary Cullinane. Uh, I, as Stacy has shared, uh, own Community Barn Ventures with her. I'm a recent addition to the state of Vermont. Uh, I come via, I started off my career as a teacher in New Jersey. I taught seniors in high school when they were 18 and I was 23. And uh, since then have had a career which has led me to Microsoft and led then led me to Houghton and Harcourt, the publisher of Curious George, uh, and then gave me an opportunity after I kept going over the couple mountains to visit Stacy and her children to say, why am I going over mountains so many times? This looks like an amazing community. And for the first time in my career, I've had the opportunity to settle down. And now this place is home. And uh, one of the signs that I had outside of my classroom when kids would walk in was leave your apathy outside. And uh, we are committed to getting involved. We are committed to being part of the solution. And I believe that uh, it's an opportunity by being part of whatever the Economic Development Council um, seeks to serve as its purpose uh, for us to ensure that other folks see this as an option. And yet we still re retain the essence of what this town is in the community that has been established here. Uh, it's a tough balance when you want people coming here because of what it stands for, and yet there's still opportunity to ensure that its future is a vibrant one. And so I look forward to the opportunity to serve in that purpose, 
and I thank you all for your time. Thank you. It's actually good because we've got a number of very qualified people interested in our economic development committee now and we yeah. just need to give them a charge, I think. We need to come well, up with Well, it looks with like uh, Fred Kinney from ACEDC has something oh. that he'd like to say. Oh. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet you. <laughs> I haven't yet met you. I didn't expect to talk tonight, but I, uh, since you're talking about the Economic Development Health Committee, I, I am interested in uh, uh, continuing ACEDC's active, uh, participation in that committee. I'm the new director of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation since January, and uh, uh, prior to this position, I uh, worked in economic development at the state level. I was before you, I think it was in October, talking about the TIF district program. Um, you'll have to talk to someone else about that now, but I'm, I'm happy to talk to you on the side about that if you want, but uh, I'm no longer running that program, but um, I was here telling you about that program last fall, I think it was. But um, So now I'm running the, the Addison County Economic Development Corporation and um, uh, would look forward to participating in that committee. I have some ideas for the town to consider. Um, that uh, I, I don't think you're offering now, and uh, um, just would uh, would uh, look forward to participating in that in that effort for the town. And it's uh, good to meet you all. And I haven't met you all officially. I've met some of you unofficially, but uh, uh, it's good to meet you all in my new capacity. This is great. We're starting to develop a committee without <laughs> having. A thank you. Slate. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'll move. I'll move the slate. Um, so I'll move that we enter into nomination all the names of the individuals who've expressed interest in appointment to a town board commission committee um, or office. Second. Move and second. And all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. And Charlie's here, so we're, we, I was going to hold you until 8, but you're early and we're at your. No, I've got no, Dan Werner ahead of you. I'm sorry. Okay. Dan, no, I've, I'm going to grab Dan first, just because he's next. Uh, okay. He's. I'll make it <coughs> quick and concise. How about that? <coughs> okay. <coughs> so a couple of things to go through tonight. <coughs> um, one is the approval of the town's annual financial plan. This is a mathematics exercise for VTRANS. Uh, it's, we do it every year. Um, what it amounts to is the state gives us an idea of how much they will reimburse us for class one, class two, and class three roads. Um, <clears throat> and you multiply that by the number of miles that we have, and that um, gives us the revenue that we will um, get from the state for the next fiscal year. So <coughs> you have the um, financial plan, I believe, in front of you. And <coughs> when you add a class one, class two, and class three loans, it comes up to $178,567. Um, <coughs> the line below all the classes is the town tax funds. That comes from our, um, our um, uh, voter approved budget. And that total <coughs> comes up to two million three hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars five hundred ninety-four and five hundred ninety-four dollars. Um, <coughs> part of this exercise is to make sure that the town is spending at least three hundred dollars per mile. Um, <coughs> and so, to arrive at that number, they like to subtract out the winter maintenance because they kind of figure there's no real maintenance done in the winter time. Um, <coughs> and so that's what the lower part of the the um, um, expenses low part of the sheet is expenses and they like to give it they want us to give um, them an idea of how much some of our major projects are gonna are gonna cost and so <coughs> for the curious folks the town of Middlebury spends roughly thirty five thousand dollars and change per mile so we definitely are above the three hundred dollars per mile the state is requesting as a minimum mm -hmm. so <coughs> That's the summary of the annual financial plan. Um, so you'll have to adopt that, and then I think Kathleen has a paper to send around for signatures, and then that goes into VTRANS. Why don't we uh, 
Should we do that first? Why don't we do that? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to sign um, the Town of Middlebury Annual Financial Plan for Town Highways as presented by Dan Warner. Second. Moved and seconded. You can pick your second, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. I heard Victor first because he's sitting next to me. Absolutely. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the second part is the town roads and bridge standards. Um, again, this is an annual requirement by VTRANS. Uh, serves in, in basically in two, two purposes. One is to make sure you're doing things uh, according to some standards that the state has set and also allows for uh, <clears throat> uh, reimbursement and FEMA events at a higher percentage. Um, there's a, I won't go through the whole uh, standards, but it really <clears throat> um, looks at roadways, how much gravel you put on a road in the road base, are you grading the roads properly, is a proper crown in the roads, uh, <clears throat> do you seed and mulch after you do construction projects, uh, stone line ditches um, when you're done, at, uh, depending on the grade of the ditch, um, and are you replacing culverts properly, the minimum size is 18 inches, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> these are um, st standards that state has adopted or, or asked the towns to adopt since January of 2013. And again, it's a, it's a, uh, a process we go annually, so our paperwork is into the state. If there's a FEMA event, they know that we're doing things according to their standards. Simple as that. So, okay. I'll make a motion to sign the certificate, certificate, certification, I can't talk tonight, sorry, <laughs> of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. That's it. It was short and sweet. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, you gave me a oh, that was a pen. Now, Charlie, we're ready for you. Here, keep that. Yeah, I'll give it. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, good evening. Uh, Charlie Kirker from Middle Road Ventures. Thank you for including us on the agenda tonight. Um, just since uh, many of you were not here on the Board of Selectmen back in 2005 when the neighborhood was first permitted, a very brief history. Um, there are a total of... Uh, almost uh, 60 home sites um, at South Ridge, and about half of them are now occupied with um, homes, or at least purchasers about to build homes. And in addition to that, we have um, developed the property next door and then sold it for the uh, lodge at Otter Creek, which is now the residence at Otter Creek, the retirement community. And as part of our um, second Act 250 permit, which was about five years ago, we obtained approval in what we called the Phase Two portion of the property for um, three solar development sites. And the materials that I submitted ahead of time to uh, Kathleen and Jen uh, show those three sites. Um, and they were delineated specifically because they were um, seen as the most ideal for solar, both in terms of their location um, relative to the rest of the development. They were sort of out of sight, out of mind. And they were um, adjacent to some conserved farmland. And the conserved farmland was also a part of the original approval of the South Ridge project. So when we... Uh, developed this project to begin with, and, and really ever since, we've been trying to be um, consistent with the goals laid out by the town. And in your most recent town plan from last year, in the energy section, I think it was page 46 or 48, you talk about the goal of generating more of our energy from wind, solar, hydro, and so forth, and supporting the statewide goal of more renewable energy resources, and then specifically um, on the second page of that uh, portion of the plan, you say Middlebury embraces solar development in cooperation with best <coughs> siting practices currently being developed by the town. 
So I'm here tonight to see if the, the board would be open to declaring this particular little uh, three parcel um, zone or district as a preferred solar site. Under the um, changes made at the state level by the legislature and the PUC, as I understand it, new provisions were um, enacted last year for the so-called net metering program. And the first two net metering projects we did um, fell under the old rules. And, um, and now for this third one, if, if we are approved as a preferred site, would fall under the new rules. And um, those rules are um, encouraging towns to set aside places where they think it's ideally suited for solar energy development or some other renewable source. And um, given the history of the Planning Commission endorsing this when we first brought it forward for the, the first of the three projects and the fact that we've really um, not had any opposition um, to the uh, projects and we've also been able to help Michael Kiernan get started. I think many of you know about Michael and his pollinator project where he's trying to get solar energy developers around the state and even outside Vermont to adopt planting practices that are pollinator friendly. So instead of just having a farming of the sun for energy, we're also creating the conditions that nurture bees. And we liked that idea four years ago when Mike came to me to discuss it. And we said, Mike, have our site, the first one on the top of the three, to experiment. And he began doing his plantings and trying different things. He actually had his hives out there. Got a lot of help, I think, from Charlie Moraz early on. So we've been um, you know, active uh, with trying to make solar you know, more than just an energy producer, but also something that supports agriculture. And as we said a few years back in one of our hearings, we had one gentleman come and express concern about the loss of agricultural land. And at the time, I said, well, you know, we're farming the sun, number one, so it is a form of agriculture, <laughs> the rays of the sun. And number two, these panels, unlike um, hard infrastructure or homes, can be removed. So 20 years from now, if the conditions of the country and the state have changed and the need is for, you know, massive planting of some crop, these panels could always be removed. So when I said earlier that we haven't ever had any opposition, we had one gentleman express concern about that, but once we docked it through in front of the Planning Commission, I think, um, you know, they were comfortable with the idea that this was actually um, supportive or at least conducive in the future to agriculture and more recently with the pollinator initiative I feel we're now really helping agriculture right off the bat um, and we gave the, the second site which was just developed last year which is the southernmost of the three um, free reign to Mike to do his plantings and the group that came in as the outside investors was so encouraged by that that they've actually now asked Mike to work with them on other projects in other places so I feel like you know we're helping spread the gospel of uh, let's make sure our bees are, are healthy as well. So with that, I'll open to questions um, and uh, any uh, comments. Questions, Laura. Um, so you clearly understand what good siting looks like, and you've certainly done a good job explaining the benefits for agriculture. And I like that it's aggregated there. And I do understand that the state is encouraging us to identify preferred solar sites as. Just as I understand it. That's right, Laura. As, um, and, <coughs> and just help us understand uh, that a little bit more in terms of this particular project. Well, um, frankly, we are still in a little bit of uncharted territory. And I just was speaking the Renewable Energy Vermont um, organization today to say, you know, what is their view of any ongoing, um, you know, regulatory or changes at the state level? Because to date, once they created this Category 3 preferred designation, they haven't done much to actually lay out what will be the specific benefits or gains for the individual landowner who tries to 
you know, obtain that status. It is perceived and believed to be a plus when you go before the Public Service Board mm -hmm. to get your so-called certificate of public good. Mm -hmm. In our case, you may notice we have two separate roads serving the two solar projects. Um, the southern one, that white line that comes across, is a road, mm -hmm. and that's gravel. Um, and then up above, the northern of the three has the road come down. You know, it almost starts where the uh, residence at Otter Creek um, mm -hmm. property line starts, and it's right next to a seven-acre park we have, which is just to the east of the top two solar sites. And we had to develop that second road because under the existing PUC or Public Service Board years ago rules, they wanted individual solar projects to have separate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we now are faced with a site of 13 acres in between the two, which we will have to access from one of those two roads. We really don't have an option to build a third road, and what would be the point? Mm -hmm. So. One of the things that we're hoping, even though it's not specified yet in any state rule that I know of or, or law, is that if the town says, yes, this is an ideal place to do solar, and we go back to the PUC, we will make the case that if you want to encourage renewable energy, you want towns to designate specific areas, then you should allow more than one 500 kilowatt project to be served by the same road. because. You know, otherwise we're making it harder to achieve the renewable energy goal the state says they have, and if they want towns to encourage it, then why then make it hard for people to do it? So we don't know the outcome of that discussion, but we think it is sort of stands to reason that it would be logical for them to hear that and say, okay, the town's behind this. They've gotten planning and select board and regional planning support, and they have two projects that are built, and everybody's happy with them. Why not a third in between? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry for the long answer. <laughs> yeah. So would there be, I mean, I see the red outlining, so is there an option of putting even more solar out there? Well, is that what you're, <laughs> you're hoping? <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of, um, the land, can I walk up to the? Mm -hmm. Please do. Uh, so this land is sloping down a little bit, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of wettish area down here. Mm -hmm. So if someday we could go back to the Planning Commission and the PUC and say, you know, we've studied this carefully, we've done the engineering, and you could fit another 200 kilowatt hours of panels. I don't know what the exact number might be. But yes, it's conceivable there could be a little bit more solar energy built in this area here. At this point, we haven't done the, the field work to really determine that flora and in reality the state doesn't have any program for above 500 mm -hmm. and 500 when we right. first laid out these three sites we said oh, they, they will each accommodate 500 quite nicely leave some room for setbacks and so forth mm -hmm. so at this point we're just hoping you know that the town the regional planning and the state will embrace that idea which we think would stand to reason to have these all right there, far from view, you know, Creek Road's way over here. Mm -hmm. If you're on any of these roads, you can't really see those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, frankly, about the only people that can see it are Mark Perrin and his wife and his daughter and her husband mm -hmm. who live way down here. And they can only see it, you know, in a far distance. So um, that's why we think this piece here in between these two will even be less visible. <coughs> um, whether there's more after that, I, I really can't tell you. We don't have any plans for more. Yeah, thank you. So I, I, I think you answered all my questions. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, let me <laughs> see if anybody else has. I know there's somebody in the audience has a question, but let me see if the select board has some first. Yeah, you mentioned after like you, sometimes they become useless after 20 years or so, and you're going to remove everything, right? Yes. Well, I mean that that what I'm saying is it is it is a feasible thing to do um, when it comes to the expected life of panels um, you know the panels being built today 
each year they get supposedly a little better. Yes. And we don't have a history, therefore, of, you know, will they still be performing in 20 years? I mean, right. these could be, you know, like a good um, power plant that's originally built with a, you know, depreciation schedule of 20 years, but after 40 years it's still operating. So we don't know what their useful life will be for sure, but the, the net metering projects, for instance, the one we did with Middlebury College was based on an original um, net metering agreement of 20 years and yeah. then a five-year extension. So, you know, whether the useful life will turn out to be more, I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I'm not worried about the time period. I'm just worried about who's responsible for that uh, to remove all Well, ul ultimately, um, the responsibility is for the landowner. Southridge. And, and which is Middle Road Ventures. Okay. Um, currently, now if we were to sell the project to some other landowner. Um, in the case of our net metering agreement on the northern of the three projects with Middlebury College, they actually have an option to purchase the project and the site outright from us. So conceivably, if it's still performing well, and if their you know, overall energy plan you know, still wants solar energy, then I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to want to uh, purchase it from us. Good. Any other questions of the board? No. Ma'am, you had a question before? Yes, the, this is the residence here, and the if you're on the top floor of the residence on the, because I went up there a couple of years ago to see, and you go, and, and things aren't leafed out, on the top floor of the windows that look south, you can see these um, arrays, but otherwise, when you're up here, you can't see them. Um, and the only other place you see them from is if you come down here and drive in this way, or if you, the, this is a drop here of a good um, 25, 30 feet. So when you're standing up here and you look out, you're actually, your sight line is over the panel, so you don't even see them until you come down the road, there's a hillside here. Which is, I remember the first time I showed this site to someone from the old Central Vermont Public Service before they merged into Green Mountain Power. Um, their site engineer, when he came out and saw the site, he said, this is the best solar site I've seen anywhere in Vermont. Because mm -hmm. you're right near town population, and you're near three-phase power, and yet you're kind of invisible to everybody. Mm -hmm. So with that, I thought, oh, okay, I guess this is worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. okay. So then my other question is, um, being a neighbor, yes. um, after, <coughs> since the residence was born and all those other houses, there's been an incredible amount of traffic on Middle Road, huge increase since we built our house. Will this cause a lot more traffic on Middle Road with um, trucks? You know, the only time that a solar project creates any traffic at all, and it's modest, is during construction. Because you have a few trucks bringing down the poles and bringing down the panels, and and you've got some construction workers that are you know, going back and forth. And that installation period lasts maybe six weeks. So will that be access from that upper road or from Creek Road? Um, no, it, would, it would be access this way and from here and then back up, I believe. I mean, we, we haven't yet done the engineering to determine whether it's gonna be smarter to have the gravel road run up or the gravel road run down. But I think this is a little easier Route because this involves that curve and a little bit of a hill. The first project, which we were trying to bring into existence in December of 2013, and there were some heavy snows and some really cold weather, and we had a flatbed truck coming down <laughs> delivering some panels or something. I forget what they were delivering, and they slid off the road <laughs> and they got stuck. And that was a mess for a while. So I think this is an easier way to access it. <coughs> Larry. Okay, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> again, being a, a new uh, member of the community, does does this decision impact any previously decided decisions that the select board has heard with regards to any other solar projects? Typically not. No. Once we've made a decision, we don't go back and reverse the previous decision. 
Mm-hmm. Russ? As I understand it, uh, part of the reason the select board is being asked to approve this as a preferred site, not just because it will help the application <coughs> approval through the Public Utility Commission, and I believe it will give them preferred rates with Green Mountain Power, but it's because the town of Newbury doesn't have an updated approved energy plan that's approved either by the Department of Public Service or once the uh, Regional Planning Commission gets their plan approved, then they can approve it. Um, ideally, we, I, I've actually been trying to petition <coughs> the Planning Commission to, to work on this, but they've got a bunch of other things and this hasn't been a priority for them. But once we get an updated plan, um, that will spell out the preferred sites and the board won't need to have to make such a decision. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> 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 no, that's good. <laughs> no, and, and it's a goal. It's our goal. That's a good point. And, and um, with the first project, we went and the designation of all three sites as part of our Active 50 application, we went through that process then with the Planning Commission. And they supported, I wrote a letter of support in our application for the Active 50 permit for phase two of this project, which was partially residential building sites and then these three solo. Um, so I agree with you. The planning commission had that fully laid out. It would be even better. I had a question. Yes, are, is there a certain number of preferred sites that we are? I'm over here. Okay. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> are there, are th- so can the town um, give any number of sites preferred site designation? Is there a certain cap? As I understand, there's no cap. No. OK. So through the public service board regulation mm-hmm. this morning and I didn't see any reference okay. to that. So Kathleen has pointed out to us uh, that our previous actions have been consistent with referring uh, a draft letter to the uh, planning commission uh, to, to get their s- input on it before we finalize our support. And we have. What's that? I thought what they already say? had. Well, we they've gone to them, but we haven't sent anything from us to come back to us. Uh, okay. Charlie's already approached them, and I are we would talking say about regional planning or town planning right now? Town planning. Town, town planning. planning. Okay. I, I have not talked to the town planning commission about the preferred solar designation request okay. in 2013 and. In 2012 and then 2013, when we were first developing the plans for our first solar project, we worked with the Planning Commission then, and they wrote a letter of support to the Act 250 Regional Planning uh, or Act 250 Environmental Board as part of our application, supporting setting aside those three parcels for solar. So they were involved at that point, but not more recently. So so I would suggest that since we don't have the the plan um, finalized, it, but the, uh, it's appropriate that it comes through the Planning Commission that we submit um, our draft letter to our Planning Commission to get their, gain their concurrence to come back to us for a final approval. Um, and given that it is a sizable project, I, I think uh, a opportunity for public warning and, and a hearing, um, and I would propose May 8th as a date um, for that. Always, always good to talk about solar again. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, if that is amenable uh, to the rest of the board, I would seek uh, two different motions, please. I'll move uh, to refer the draft letter of support for the proposed Southridge net metering solar project to the Planning Commission for further discussion and a recommendation to the select board. Good. Did you second? Yeah. Are you seconded? Second <laughs> right. Victor seconded. Um, but it was so a good motion, so yeah. that means I seconded. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, comments? Well, I just wonder how the Energy Committee intersects with these things because it's a solar project. I understand that the Planning Commission should be looking at it, but I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering what the board feels about in terms of the role of the Energy Committee in vetting things. 
I think if the planning yes. commission has a question uh, that they would they mm -hmm. would be appropriate if they have a question to seek the energy committee's input. So it goes that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we do that loop before May yep. 8th. Yes. Yep. That's correct. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. Yeah, Thank you very much. Uh, we got one more uh, motion, uh, oh. and that's for the May 8th. I'll also move to warn a public hearing to take testimony on the proposed Southridge net metering solar <laughs> project for either Tuesday, April 24th, or Tuesday, May 8th. And, and I'm going to do a friendly May amendment to May 8th, if you okay. could. Yep. Yeah. May 8th is better for me, too. Thank you. We have two members that may not be here already, so. 24th might be a tough one. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. So we have a request for a road name change from Armory Lane to Amory Lane. <laughs> and, um, and I'll tell you this kind of Same funny history. because. Uh, <laughs> The residences uh, at Otter Creek, where it used to be the lodge, were developed by a friend of mine, and his son's name is Amory. <laughs> and I think it's a typo that it became Armory. So just, I think it actually. Like, just like my name all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I actually think the original <laughs> intent was <laughs> the original intent was for Amory. survey that that calls it armory on the survey so I'm not sure exactly where the title just happened. just to make sure it's all one yes plus okay there people that, I mean there's residences on there so I could give Kathleen a, kind of a title that we could then connect it to different residences so I think that would that would be appropriate uh, pleasure of the board I'll move uh, to approve renaming the private road Armory Lane in the residences at Otter Creek Complex to Emory Lane. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Kathleen? Okay. <coughs> so, we're at the um, budget reports. Mm -hmm. So, on the general fund, um, pretty much tracking per budget with some overages and some unders, uh, underages um, to note that uh, as we heard in January, the um, Public Works Department is tracking over budget, anticipating about a $36,000 uh, overage at, on the $1.5 million budget, so that's less than a 2% overage. Um, pl uh, please commit Police uh, department is still looking like it's going to be slightly under budget, as uh, is the library. So hopefully that will balance out uh, in the end on the general fund. We're a little bit over uh, the 67 uh, percent mark of the year for the February 28th uh, financial reports, which you have in front of us at 74 percent. That, but that is because we've done all of the transfers for the equipment fund and <coughs> the capital improvement fund <coughs> on the equipment fund uh, we do have uh, some large expenses for the maintenance of equipment about forty thousand dollars more than last year spent year to date um, we do have a fund balance in the equipment fund mm -hmm. that can absorb uh, the overage um, if there is any at the year end <coughs> and water and sewer fund uh, are tracking as anticipated with to note that the water department has had more breaks this year than last and I have nothing else to add they had more breaks this year yeah I thought last summer was <coughs> well, last summer would be this year this fiscal year oh the fiscal okay yeah. 
Yeah, late summer was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. On um, line 31 for the East Middlebury Library, why is that amount so low? Do you have, like, the, bo in both years, the ex what's budgeted and what's expended at this point? Yeah, I don't know if those transfers are made at the year end, oh. but I can follow up with oh, Jackie on that. Okay, I get it. That would make sense. Thank you, Kathleen. Probably buy all the books through the main library. Yep. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Uh, check warrants. You have the copy here. I do? Yep. Oops. So this is what you're going to go with. So you're going to insert those. Sorry. We signed them right. This is your first time. Um, so I'm making a motion yep. um, to approve the total expenditures in the amount of. Three hundred twenty-nine thousand eight hundred fifty-nine and seventy cents, consisting of. Do I do this? Mm -hmm. um, Two hundred thirty-four thousand seven hundred thirteen and eighty-two cents for the accounts payable, and ninety-five thousand one hundred forty-five and eighty-eight cents for payroll for the period of March twenty-eighth, two thousand eighteen, through April tenth, two thousand eighteen. Good. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Town manager's report. Okay. Uh, two items. Uh, we have received notice from uh, the police employees um, that they would like to form a separate union from the other employees. Currently, all of our public works and police, library, and clerical employees are under one un union, and this uh, would be a new union. So we'll be uh, looking forward to negotiating a contract with them if they are certified by the Vermont Labor Relations Board. Was, was there a, any particular reason? This uh, police association is made, just making a hard push in the state of Vermont. Okay. I don't know of any other reasoning behind okay. that. And I would say that Middlebury is one of the few in towns that has all of its employees under one union currently. Mm -hmm. And then happy to announce that uh, the town of Middlebury or the Memorial Sports Center is one of the four finalists to receive the annual Craft Hockeyville Award. The grand prize of $150,000 would be a significant contribution towards the Memorial Sports Center's fundraising campaign to finish off the second floor of the Sports Center. Community members can help by voting online for the Memorial Sports Center during the voting window beginning April 13th and closing at 11 a.m. on April 14th. The finalist will be announced during a nationally televised NHL game on NBC on Saturday, April 14th. And just to give you a heads up, the Memorial Sports Center is planning a special uh, viewing of this at, at the Sports Center, so you may want to mark your calendars for that event. And also, we're working on uh, ways to encourage voting uh, to support their effort, and stay tuned for that as well. I'm wow. very excited about that. <coughs> that would be great. It's a great opportunity to be one of the four countries. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. And the competition is a little bit tougher, so I encourage everybody to come forward and mm -hmm. Uh, vote for Middlebury. Vote early and often. Yeah, you can, you can vote as much as you can want. You can like get, get on the computer and do it like a hundred times. Really? Yeah, you can do it as many times as you want. Nope. <laughs> well, I wonder, since we're the closest to Canada, I wonder if, uh, what if we get the, all of Canada to vote for us? All of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to some relatives up there. Okay, board member concerns. Laura, what you got? <laughs> okay, so tomorrow at Ilsley Library, you can learn about composting. Um, and as you know, uh, Act 148 makes it law in, by July 2020 that you must um, not put your food scraps in your trash. So this is in preparation for that. It's 
it's voluntary right now. Um, so the transfer station, the Addison County Solid Waste Management District is hosting these workshops and also some options. So this has been on display. You've seen the screen bucket before. This is free to households that um, want to bring their compost to the transfer station or to a hauler or a drop-off like Desiree. So you can bring this you know, to the transfer station. You can put meat in this too. You know, as well as your other food scraps. So that's the good thing. And you can twist. I mean, this is secure, so animals won't so get you can, into that. So you can use it in your garden also? Um, you don't want this bucket if you have a garden. This is really for those of you who don't do your own composting in your backyard. Okay. So this is for people who are in condos or people who don't have composting systems. That's what this is for, this big bucket. Um, and it's optional. You don't have to do this yet. And then this little kitchen composter is just a way to get it, you know, from your household into your backyard or into this bucket. And these are $5 at the transfer station. We have this in our own town office as a model. So if you want to set up your own compost system in your backyard, there are two bin options that you can buy from the transfer station. They're a really good price, like that's a, a service that the transfer station provide so for $45 you can get the black bin that goes in your backyard or you can get the solar cone which um, we have as a demo project right behind the town office and so you can go see that and you you can put meat in that one because it's very intense with um, collecting the heat you wouldn't want to put meat into your your backyard black bin um, but the solar collector allows you to have that option if you want it so so if you, um, if you do have meat, uh, you can just put that in the trash. You don't have to you know, worry about that. So this is really for other food scraps, but for those of you that want to go that extra mile, you could, you know, you could. So I just wanted to point that out because we're going into the gardening season and these workshops are ramping up and we're looking at waste reduction on all fronts. And why are we doing this? Because our landfills are full, you know, and that's why You've been seeing this pacing over the past years of, you know, first getting the recyclables out of trash, then yard waste now, and it's law. You cannot put your yard waste in your trash. That could go to the transfer station or the backyard, or you're going to have to find another way to remove that and not put that in trash. So that's the update on waste and food stuff. <coughs> Thank you, Laura. I feel like I'm watching PBS or maybe across the fence. So. Uh, appreciate it. I have nothing at this time, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she just blew you away, didn't she? she yeah, like, I, I can't follow that. So. I'm, I'm, your de I'm your delegate on the Addison. I know, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> Rod? Um, uh, about a, last month, I think uh, the board asked me to reach out to the MCTV regarding the sound system for the gym. And I did reach out to them, and Kurt uh, came back to me, and he doesn't have any idea what uh, he hasn't dealt with this kind of stuff in a while. Um, but he he did refer me to Chris English because Chris English in the process of uh, improving the sound system here. So I reached out to Chris, and he said he can talk to the same company he's dealing with for our sound system here and he thinks it's fairly easy to get an estimate for what it's going to cost us for the municipal gym. Uh, so that's, I'm, I'm optimistic of that. Uh, the other thing was, uh, you know, the Connor Home building has been auctioned off. I reached out to Fred Kenny, and uh, I'm, I, I would like to reach out to uh, Malone Properties to see what their plan is. I think they want to bring more retail in this town, which will be an exciting news. Mm -hmm. And I would like to help them as much as I can um, into making that a success. Well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 130 something thousand square feet, yeah, right? It's a sizable building. That's yeah. a lot of it space is, there. Is, yeah, so he, he's looking at the possibility of retail in that space? Uh, <coughs> Malone Properties said just business is what they mentioned. Uh -huh. Next year. So we are uh -huh. looking at what we can do. Hmm. Okay. Nick? You know, I, I had this um, technology I'd heard about, but I never experienced it until this past week. I actually had three rental cars at three different locations. And um, 
I was, the first time it happened to me, I wasn't quite sure what this thing was. And as I, it, it started shaking the wheel, well, it turns out what is it's a lane drift feature that they're putting in cars now, which um, first was kind of a fascinating technology to me, but then it made me start to wonder, well, the curiosity of me is what was it seeing? And what it's seeing is well-defined uh, fog lines on the road, I think. Because when it wasn't a well-defined fog line, it didn't see it. And if there was no fog line, it didn't see it. So that's fascinating part. But then I thought, okay, what is this potential risk it's throwing at us as a town? Um, I, I'd like to think this is being addressed on a national level and on a, a state level uh, under, through VTRANS, but it's something I'd like to eventually keep an eye out so that we are protected as a town. So it's something that, whether it's through VLCT or whatever, the appropriate time to have a, a conversation is to make sure this is not putting us as, at a higher risk. I'd hate to have a situation where somebody assumes this thing's going to work in winter conditions or whatever reason that the, the fog line isn't clearly defined and suddenly we're, we're facing a problem we don't really want. So that was, it was fascinating but worrisome in some respects. Mine has it. And uh, you play with it too? I, I can <laughs> only read it, you know, only occasionally, so. <laughs> I was actually, I kept playing with it to see what trick it. It was fascinating, actually. Yeah. It's kind of cool when it works. But. Yeah. It's called two hands on the steering wheel. They're that's, they're exactly, gonna, that's exactly what it's called, but, and that's the proper way. But. They're going to perfect, perfect it before we know it, but it'll be probably by <coughs> GPS. Yeah. But, but uh, Brian Alexander, <coughs> at the annual meeting of MCTV, he mentioned this point, and he said, uh, automatic uh, robots or uh, driverless cars, they are much safer than us, is what he's getting at. So these lane, uh, lane departure features, so he's thinking that those are much better than uh, what we are at right now. Well, especially with all the distracted driving. Yeah. Well, I think that that's true. I mean, it, or it may very well be true. The feature is what is it putting as far as a risk on us as a community to maintain the features that allow that, that vehicle to function the way it's supposed to. Makes us more lazy, more not one well, to I, I want to make sure I want to make sure it doesn't make us more liable. That's what I'm really concerned <coughs> with. Um, from a town stand. From a town yeah, yeah. and road ma road maintenance standpoint. That's correct. Yeah. That's exactly that's that's my concern with it. <coughs> Heather. Um, I just um, wanted to encourage people to vote. And that's this weekend, this, this Saturday and Sunday for the Hockeyville thing. Um, I really think it would be great to have Middlebury recognized not only for the sports center, but also as a great place to live and, you know, a wonderful community. And so I hope people vote on Friday and Saturday. And then also just wanted to thank everyone that um, – put their name in for boards and commissions. It's always really uh, inspiring for me to see people come forward and put their names out there and participate. And so thank you to everyone, so. Well said. Victor. Nothing. Nothing. Um, I'll just let everybody know I'm gonna be out of town. Um, I leave Friday evening and I will be back on the 24th sometime depending upon how the flights go, so. Um, if you're looking for me, emails uh, about the only way to get me. We need an executive session motion, and Susan, who has carried us into executive session for years now, is not here. So I would appreciate if somebody uh, would like to volunteer to step up. Let me do it. That would be great. <coughs> Excuse me. In accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find that premature general knowledge of the consideration of two pending contract negotiations would clearly place the select <coughs> board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy as it discussed the two pending contract negotiations in public. I'll second. second. You heard Victor first time. <laughs> no, that one, that one was pretty. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. 
I further move that the board enter into executive session to discuss two pending contract negotiations under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. Moved and seconded by Victor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So at 8.35, we're going to uh, go into executive session.